Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the GPD P2 Max, which is a tiny computer with an 8.9 inch display and an Intel Core M3 8100Y processor that ships with Windows 10 pre-installed, but you can get it to boot different operating systems with sort of mixed results. Uh, well, I haven't done extensive tests on Linux, I haven't installed anything to local storage, I have demonstrated that it is possible to uh, boot from a USB flash drive and try different operating systems. I'm going to show you how to do that. I've got a few different OS's on flash drives here, and honestly I forget which is which. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and hammer the delete key, see what we've got. So from, uh, from here we're in the BIOS or UEFI settings, and I can go in and say I want it to boot from the flash drive. So I'm going to hit save and exit and see what happens. Uh, what we've got here is Pop OS, which is an operating system that's based on Ubuntu Linux, but it's uh, designed by the people at System76, which normally uh, preload it on some of their own computers, but it is something that you can run on other devices as well. So that's what happened to be on this flash drive, and let's see how it goes. Uh, this particular model is up for pre-order through a crowdfunding campaign for about $705. You can find a link in the description. Um, and I don't have to say too much else to waste time now because we're already booted. So I'm just going through and enabling a couple of settings here. I don't want to, uh, yeah, try demo mode, that's what I want. Uh, so it looks like the touch screen is, or the um, touchpad is working. Wi-Fi is detected. And what about touch? Not so much with the touch screen. What about keyboard shortcuts? Looks like brightness works. Volume adjustments also work. So if you don't need the touch screen, it looks like this is not so bad out of the box. Uh, since it's not installed locally to, uh, to the built-in storage, I can't necessarily say how it's gonna perform in terms of uh, sleep or power management, uh, but Overall, it seems to work, and I did notice that we can hear audio when we do that. So, multi-touch seems to work, and video playback seems to work. Uh, now, the screen scaling does seem to be set at about 100% here, so everything looks pretty small on the display. Let's see if we can go into the display settings and change that. Yep, pretty easily we can switch to 200%. And we didn't have to rotate the screen, which is nice and something that helps set this apart from some other operating systems. So that is Pop OS, uh, latest version downloaded from the Pop OS uh, website, it's System76. Let's go ahead and shut this down and try something different. All right, so I heard the fan shut off, so it's safe to take that out. I'm going to go ahead and plug in another USB flash drive again. I kind of forget which ones are which. In order to get into the BIOS or UFI settings, I'm going to hit the function and delete key here upon boot. Again, it's defaulted to the Windows boot manager. I'm going to change that to the flash drive, save and exit, and it looks like we have Linux Mint. Now, if I remember correctly, what's interesting about Linux Mint is while it loads, uh, the screen resolution is going to be a little bit off. So we'll see how that goes. Now, since I'm running from a flash drive, nothing I'm doing here is overwriting the software on the computer itself. So I can always boot back into that. Already, audio seems to be working. It does say that it's running in software rendering mode. So at least with this version of Linux Mint, which um, it has the Cinnamon desktop environment, it doesn't seem to have out of the box support for the graphics uh, hardware, but it seems to work okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the display settings here. It's set to 800 by 600. There's no option to change that and no option to rotate the screen. So more advanced users may be able to find solutions for some of these things, but out of the box, that's what we've got. 
Wi-Fi doesn't seem to be t detected. I think I might have typed that wrong, though. All right, we're connected to the internet. Let's try screen brightness. Nope. Shortcut does not seem to be working. Volume does. And I hear audio. And what about touch? Nope, no touch screen support. And we already know it's in software rendering mode. So let's go ahead and shut down and try a different operating system. Let's just see if we can get through one or two more. This time we've got Ubuntu. We're going to say try without installing. Uh, one nice thing here is, unlike a lot of earlier devices in GPD and uh, similar companies, everything for the most part so far seems to be in landscape orientation. We don't have to change the screen orientation. Um, definitely seem to be at 100% scaling there, at least in the, uh, the Grub boot menu, though. So again, this is available for pre-order through a Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign. It's set to ship a little bit later this year. Uh, prices should probably go up once that happens. So let's see, we've got uh, Wi-Fi is not connected. Scaling is set to 100%. Touch doesn't seem to be supported. Out of the box, at least. Let's go ahead and open a web browser. Screen brightness, volume shortcuts are working. Um, let's try display. All right, so we can change the screen scaling pretty easily. Now, if you look closely, you might notice that it says we have a 2560 by 1600 pixel display. And let's see, what's the easiest way to figure this out? I know I've actually got two different versions of Ubuntu. This is version 1904. So uh, I already know that the touch doesn't work. Most other things do seem to work. And I also know that I've got another version of Ubuntu where the touchscreen does work. So I'm going to go ahead and power this off for now, now that we know basically things are working on that version. The fan's sort of kicking into high gear because I've been asking it to do a lot over the last few minutes here. Get that next flash drive ready. Uh, so there's also a lower cost version of this that's um, got an Intel Celeron processor. Uh, I don't know if everything that works in this is necessarily going to work on that version, but if you did want to save some money, it is an option that you have. Change the boot order one more time. Save and exit. Now it looks like the screen scaling is set correctly here. And I believe what we have this time is Ubuntu 1804.2 LTS, or long-term support. The .2 means that it's a, a point release, means it'll not have any major new features, but it should have uh, updated drivers, security fixes, and other uh, things that are part of the ongoing support Canonical offers for newer versions of Ubuntu, um, or for long-term support versions of Ubuntu. So this is the version that was actually released uh, about a year ago at the, at, as of the time that I'm shooting this video, but then had some incremental updates since then. And one of the nice things about that is that it sometimes supports touch input. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be working right now. Um, 
I have run this version. Oh, you know what? I don't know that it supports touch input on this device. Now that I think about it, it supports touch input on the One Mix 3 Yoga. Um, but it does seem to work pretty well out of the box here. And it does have the touchscreen support for another device with somewhat similar hardware. Still not working here though. So that is something I forgot while I was shooting this video and something that's kind of important to know. Now again, I'm not installing anything to the local storage here. So if you wanted to go in and tweak some settings, try to look for additional drivers, you might have more success. Um, but for the most part, other things seem to work. We've got volume, brightness, Wi-Fi works. And I haven't had problems with video in any of these, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut down one more time and just show you that there's one last flash drive I've got over here. I'm going to see if I can get that one to boot properly as well. It's something a little bit different. I don't love that you have to sort of press the power button down for a moment and hold it pretty hard for it to, uh, to register, but... Since the fan tends to kick in, when you do, it almost acts like a status light because there's no other indicator that the computer's about to turn on until you hear the fan kick in or you start to see the screen light up. So here what we've got is actually Chromium. Now this is a uh, sort of experimental build of Chromium by Keith Myers, who designed it to run on the GPD Pocket 1 and GPD Pocket 2. This is the P2 Max. Not all of the hardware works uh, perfectly out of the box but he is trying to modify his build of Chromium so that it'll do that. So this is the open source version of Google's Chrome OS or Chrome operating system that is designed to basically be a full-fledged operating system based around the Chrome web browser. Uh, it normally ships on Chromebooks, but you can, since it's open source, Chromium is open source, whereas Chrome is not, um, people have done interesting things with it, like porting it to other operating systems. And Again, touch doesn't seem to be working here. It usually takes a second to register this, but I'm gonna say browse as guest so I don't have to log in right now. And momentarily, hopefully it'll, uh, it'll register that click. Uh, for the most part, this operating system seems to work the way you would expect it to, except perhaps for uh, the lack of touch. There we go. And it's just another example of one of the many different operating systems you can run on this little computer. So uh, again, touch, not so much. Touch screen, or uh, touch pads, just fine. Screen brightness controls work. Volume controls work. Uh, let's go ahead and connect to the internet. Actually, it's already remembered my internet connection from a previous attempt. And you can see that we can Surf pretty quickly. Should be able to watch videos. So video works, web browsing works. You've got an app launcher. And that is a look at Chromium OS, which is uh, one of one, two, three, four, five different operating systems besides Windows that I have just demonstrated here on this little computer. So um, while it's not necessarily a perfect out of the box experience, it is fairly simple to get the uh, GPD P2 Max to boot different operating systems. And once you've done that, you can try troubleshooting uh, if you are a little bit more advanced at using any of those operating systems. Let's see if I can shut it down. We've got a full size USB type A port here, USB type C, micro HDMI on this side, webcam, USB Type-A, 
and a audio jack. And the fan is still spinning. So I was going to go ahead and boot back into Windows, but uh, trust me, Windows is still installed. Actually, you know what? I'll just go ahead and press and hold the power button until the fan turns off. And it's done that. Remove the flash drive. This one sort of gets in there pretty tough. Lament that I haven't stopped this video already, but now I feel like I need to do this one more time just to show that it works. There we go. And one nice thing here is I don't even need to go back into the UFI and change the boot order. It should just automatically go right to the Windows bootloader. Uh, unlike some other devices where you have to go and change it every time, this time it'll just boot straight back into Windows 10. So um, again, I haven't tested sleep, I haven't tested power management, I haven't tested uh, the fingerprint sensor, but I did test touch. Touch does not seem to work in most of those operating systems. And um, the uh, keyboard shortcuts tend to be hit or miss, but uh, more often than not, they work. Uh, screen brightness, volume controls, and so forth. So overall, everything seems to work pretty well for sort of starter, and then you might be able to uh, to change things out with a little bit of elbow grease if you are somebody who is inclined to do so. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing taking a quick look at a couple of different operating systems and how they do or don't function on the GPD P2 Max. I think the biggest benefit is compared to some earlier devices like this, the fact that they do seem to support out of the box. The um, screen rotation is accurate. Sometimes they have 100% scaling. Usually it's pretty easy to switch to 200% scaling. Linux Mint was sort of the trickiest one because it was stuck at 800 by 600 pixels. Um, most other operating systems seem to work pretty well. And Ubuntu, I didn't even comment on this. Scaling seemed pretty much perfect right out of the box. So you can find more details about this little laptop and other little laptops, among other things, at lilliputing.com or check out the description of this video for links.